Now, the long summer holidays might sound like an idyllic prospect, but sadly for many young people, it is a different story. Two in three disadvantaged children are afraid of being attacked or exploited by gangs. That's just one of the stark findings by the Childhood Trust, which surveyed 12,000 children through the charities it supports. The Trust claims that cuts to youth services across the country over the last five years have contributed significantly to the rise in violent crime. Paul McNamara has this. We just walk past feeling really sad because um, you, know, you look at the building, it's just like, why is such a wonderful building shut down, not being used? At the lower ground, there was um, table tennis, there was um, what else, snooker. We did outings, we went on, like, we went to Eminem World, we went to Sea Life, we went to a lot of places. For five decades, this building served the local community. A purpose-built youth centre that survived recessions, a winter of discontent and a summer of riots. But it couldn't survive the age of austerity. Four years ago, the doors closed. It was just really sad when it closed down. I mean, all the children, I mean, like, they just hung about the streets, not doing anything. I think violence actually went up some more in the area. Um, and I lived, we've lived around here about 10 years now, over 10 years. Yeah. And um, just a big difference, big difference, yeah. For most people, rising levels of violence are headlines they read about somewhere else. For Latoya and her family of five, it's part of everyday life that they no longer have a sanctuary from during the long summer holiday ahead. Well, like, at the end of the day, like, there will, the knife violence or anything will, will increase because, like, people are just, like, nothing to do. They have nothing to do. Just two streets away, this is now what welcomes kids around here, and only for a few days a week, a couple of hours at a time. The floor is lava! Andrew Brown used to run activities at the old youth centre. Now, with limited opening hours, he can no longer offer things like sex education, health advice or counselling. And with limited space, eight-year-olds playing cars compete for room with teenagers playing basketball. No, it's not ideal. We are thankful, but no, it's not ideal. Definitely not. The building's still there. It's just still standing there. It's not doing anything. What do you think when you're walking past that building? <sighs> I want to be back there. It's simple as that. It's a, that was a purpose-built building. And, um, you know, you had upstairs, had downstairs, had a coffee area, you know, and you also had an IT room area as well. So the children can just be in all of there. And we used to get between 30 and 40 children every night. Lewisham councils say they prioritise youth provision despite central government cuts to their funding of 63% over 10 years. But Grove Park's closure is not unique. In 2011, there were 243 youth centres or council-supported projects across the capital. The Green Party has mapped each closure, and six years of cuts later, there are now only 162 left, with more expected to close. It's a story replicated across England. Over the last four years alone, councils are spending £206 million less on youth services, a drop of nearly a third. Tyler lives across town in south-west London. He is this boxing club to come to on weeknights, weekends and all through the coming summer. What made you start coming down here? Um, just got out of trouble, innit? So, like, wanted to do something active. So if you weren't here then, where would you be? I have no, I have no clue. No clue, no clue at all. <laughs> I just want to do something. So like, I just want to do something outside of school or outside of, or just chilling on the state. Yeah. I want to do something that can get me somewhere like. This center is about more than just boxing. For those that need it, there's a hot meal. There are music facilities and a dance studio. It serves young people who are at risk of being involved with crime funded by charities and private donations and operated by locals like Warren, electrician by day, youth worker by night. I was from a single parent background and obviously my mum used to go to work and I used to be left at home alone and things like that. So obviously I believe that these kids are going through this probably the same situation and obviously it's just good for us to have somewhere for them to go. The problem has only got worse since Warren was a kid according to data released today. The Childhood Trust that supports this project and 21 more across the capital survey the charities they fund about the summer holidays when school is out and there is little left to do. Half of disadvantaged children under the age of 11 
will be left without adult supervision, they say. Almost two thirds of disadvantaged children and young people are frightened of being attacked or exploited by gangs. And more than half of them have already witnessed violence during school holidays. The red areas are hotspots of crime, yep. the, the, the orange areas are, are, are lesser and fading to the... The rise in youth violence is a complex issue with no single solution. Although reluctant to make a direct causal link to cuts to youth services, the man behind today's report says the two are connected. So we wanted to overlay. There are many factors that feed into it, but there's definitely a link between the closure of, of youth services and the increase of, of violence. The cuts to youth services are a false economy. Children need somewhere safe to go, they need somewhere safe to play, they need positive role models. If we cut that out of the fabric of society, children get the message that they're not important. A government spokesperson said that since 2010, 300,000 fewer children are living in absolute poverty and they have announced a £2 million fund for organisations to support disadvantaged families during the school holidays. Back at Grove Park, locals have taken matters into their own hands. I'm doing this to try and save the youth club. Local parents have been told if they can fund it, they can save it. They've stopped the building being demolished. A property company has agreed to fund the refurbishment, but its future isn't certain yet. We're getting there, we're getting there. We're clearing it all off, hopefully in the autumn or as soon as we can, we reopen the place. But it all depends on people power, and that's what saved this youth club from being demolished people. So keep it up. Okay.